I am uh, Gene Dewan. I'm a vitro-retinal surgeon and uh, have been involved in the development of these products with uh, these, uh, these products originally came out of uh, Johns Hopkins for the most part and uh, were uh, now developed and uh, um, very happily uh, promoted by uh, Iridex, who I work with. This product, Moist Air, and I'm, I have a, uh, one of these uh, devices, came from a need when I was doing a lot of fluid gas exchanges, uh, particularly with translocation. And there were, we were doing, um, fluid, doing manipulations of the retina under gas, uh, and it was like managing a giant retinal tear or something like that. And what we found is after about five minutes, we would start getting drying of the posterior capsule of the lens, and it would become more and more opaque. And after some time, we could no longer see to do the manipulations that we needed to do under the gas. And initially, we were trying to think why we were getting this opacity uh, of the lens. And uh, it became pretty clear because it was located more in the sector of the infusion line. So we began to study uh, the gases that we were using. And uh, I, at, when I very first noticed that I had a big problem was I was using one of the older Bosch and Lam machines and the, and the machine had uh, compressed tank gas. You know, and I don't know if any of you scuba dive, but compressed air out of a tank is completely devoid of any humidity, partly because of the uh, uh, compression. So that's what's being used to inject in the eye. The good thing was you could get high pressure flows, but the very bad thing was that it was completely anhydrous. They had no water in it. And so this caused extremely quick uh, opacification of the lens. Normally, uh, room air has a, in the operating room has about a 40% humidity level. It's pretty dry in the operating room. And that's because, obviously, of the air conditioning and other things. But it's much more dry than no, even normal air. So uh, using the gas pumps that are in the machines today, we still have this very dry air. And uh, so uh, we began to use this humidifier uh, to try to rehumidify the dry air coming out of the machines. Uh, what we found was, in doing this, in the, just this amount of humidification, we were able to take the onset of cataract and opacity from about five minutes to 10 to 15 minutes of manipulation. Where it comes, where it's the most important today is under doing uh, fluid gas exchange for macular holes, where we're trying to drain the uh, last little bits of fluid around the macular hole. And uh, if we, obviously, if uh, sometimes, and during diabetics, when we are trying to do uh, flatten the retina, we take out fluid, and then we notice uh, uh, there's some problem, and we do the fluid gas exchange, and we notice some problem, and then we take out the air again, we get a little bleeding, we want to take out the blood, we go back, uh, to fluid, then we go do a fluid gas exchange, and then we start getting a little bit of cataract. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but uh, it's a very disturbing thing. Sometimes you have to stop the operation, or worse, remove the lens just to see <laughs> what we need to do. The humidifier extends that grace period of where you have a clear lens for about uh, twice. So if it's five or 10 minutes, you can get 10 to 20 minutes of, uh, of time. It's a, very, it's a very simple device. It goes in the line of your air. So what, uh, in this case, uh, 
what we do is we take the, the device as a chamber, it comes dry, we fill it with the infusion fluid, and so the infusion fluid fills this. There's a, a uh, kind of a, a, a cellular um, uh, sponge-like thing inside that gas goes through, and as the gas goes through that channel, it begins to humidify it. Uh, so that sits in the line. Uh, you can put it, some of the lines of the machines, I think all of them now, have a break in the line so you can put this in. And uh, another way of doing it, if you can do that, you can turn on your infusion fluid and push the infusion fluid through this. And then uh, when you do air, and the fluid just goes right through it, and when you switch to air, if the air stopcock is behind it or in front of it, the air just goes through it. It takes a minute to drain the fluid out when you're waiting for the air. So I'll pass that around if uh, people want to see it. Are there any questions uh, about this? This is uh, really quite useful on diabetics, macular holes, other things. An another thing that Brooks McEwen brought up early with macular holes are visual field losses associated with fluid gas exchange with macular holes. And that is due to drying of the retina. And we don't see it quite as much as we used to. But now we see uh, uh, with the small gauge vitrectomy, but this would prevent that as well. Uh, green tips. Green tips are uh, just a, it's a very simple, nice innovation. And uh, we have some here, too, that I wanted to kind of pass around. Uh, I don't know if, uh, how... Uh, easy it is to see it, but uh, all of us have used these flexible tip cannulas. They're quite useful uh, uh, for doing fluid gas exchange. They're much more gentle to the retina, and uh, Iridex now has two forms, the straight uh, tip and a brush tip that's even uh, softer. Uh, these are quite general and useful for uh, removing fluid from the, uh, from the eye. The green tip, uh, under uh, the conditions inside of the eye, with the light shines, this is fluorescent. And uh, what you can see is with the clear, it's sometimes quite hard to see. It's like a glass rod in and fluid. It's very, very hard to see the tip. It's not that it's impossible. We understand it. We've gotten used to it. But the green tip just fluorescence, much easier to see. Under difficult conditions, it's just a much, you have a much better idea of where this is. This was developed by my partner, uh, Mark Kumayan, uh, at the time. And this is, uh, it's really been quite uh, useful. There's no reason, in my opinion, to use a clear one. It's just, this is just better. You know, there, there's certain things that happen, uh, and uh, this is a, a kind of a small uh, innovation, but on the other hand, there's no, it's such a good one, and there's no reason not to use this. So I, this is, the first time you use it, you'll say, uh, why I want this in all of my cases. Just no reason not to have it. Any questions uh, about that? I think it's pretty straightforward, but it is a very, very nice uh, addition. Uh, I, there are many ways of viewing the fundus uh, today, and we use uh, lots of types of contact lenses. We use disposable contact lenses. We use biome systems with permanent lenses, biome systems with disposable lenses. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's not an insignificant cost factor for our vitrectomies, the disposable lenses. Uh, if you use, most of us, uh, after, you know, if we've been at it for more than uh, 10 years or so, uh, we're very familiar with quartz contact lenses. We use quartz contact lenses uh, as, as our standard. And there's almost nothing 
better in terms of quality than that standard quartz contact lens. So we, we feel very comfortable with membrane peeling and the like. But if you work in a hospital like I work in, where many people use those lenses, they get chipped, they get scratched, and even though the brand new one is good, the chipped, scratched, broken one is not. And it's really frustrating. And uh, we were, uh, I got a watch some, you know, 10 years ago, and I bought it on an airplane, you know, making a long trip and looking, and so, and this watch was nice, and it had a sapphire crystal on it. And that sapphire crystal, I had always scratched up my watches and, and you know, never could have a nice, uh, you know, watch crystal without a big scratch going right through the middle of it. And, it, you know, nice watch with a big scratch. It always made me annoyed. And I said, well, why can't we make, and it, they were beautiful, why can't we make uh, contact lenses after s sapphire? How expensive is that? And I was talking to one of my engineer friends and says, oh, now you can make, these are synthetic materials and you can make them. I mean, this obviously it's, the, it's absolutely the same stuff as rings for those of you that like beautiful sapphires. Uh, but they can make this perfectly crystalline artificially. The, obviously, these don't have the dyes that make real natural sapphire beautiful, but uh, they do have that anti-scratch resistance uh, uh, and uh, break and chip resistance. And uh, we have, if you buy one set of these, no matter how often they're used, no matter how aggressive the nurses are in cleaning in them, uh, they'll never scratch and they'll never chip. And uh, I don't know, uh, maybe y'all can tell me, what's y'all's guarantee for these things? Do you have a, do you, do you, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the guarantee is. But you, they could guarantee it for anything you want because you're not going to turn them back because they're not going to chip and they're not going to scratch. And uh, they'll be very, uh, that, that is the beautiful thing about these lenses. What I did once was uh, just to demonstrate how robust they are. I took, I mean, you can see there's a variety of these lenses. One thing about these lenses that is different than a quartz lens is they have a higher index of refraction. So you get a wider field. If, for the flat contact lens, the Plano uh, uh, contact lens, putting that on the eye, you have a, a wider field than you would with the quartz. So it's a little bit, you, you just have to know that it's, you have a different index of refraction. If you want the same visual field and the same amount of stereopsis and uh, magnification, you have to have the slightly uh, uh, convex um, uh, contact lens to get that magnification. But they are amazing. They're beautiful. They're, they, you get them out of the box the first time, and they look like that the entire time. So this is uh, this is uh, just was a pet peeve of mine not having uh, excellent contact lenses every time, and this really uh, solves that problem. Uh, those are the things that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, there's a lot of very exciting stuff that's going on at. Uh, uh, Iridex for uh, new surgical products. Uh, they have, uh, you know, they we know them for their lasers and their probes and their quality uh, and their uh, support. But I think you're going to see uh, some very, very novel, exciting new products that we are working with them uh, on, and we're excited to be a part of that.